So my brothers and sisters, this week I want to talk to you guys, instead of reading a scripture passage to you, I want to talk to you guys about a particular topic. In the Book of Mormon, the word wilderness is used over 250 times. Over 250 times. That's a lot. Now, I'm going to get into the plates of brass a little bit and step away from the Book of Mormon for a second. One of the things I find interesting is that in the plates of brass, the word for wilderness in Hebrew is it's four letters, Mem, Resh, Mem, Nun. Mormon. And that's very interesting because what's the Book of Mormon? That makes it the Book of the Wilderness. And there seems to be this idea that, that people go out into the wilderness to see God. For example, the very first time, not including in, in headers, the very first time that the term wilderness, and I'm going to say Mormon here, is used in the Book of Mormon is in 1st Nephi. In the Universal Book of Mormon, 1st Nephi 1, 26, 2, 2, and it came to pass the Lord commanded my father, even in a dream, that he should take his family and depart into the wilderness. Now this idea of taking your family and departing into the wilderness, this is this is very interesting. It's very similar. When Moses he left Egypt, he fleed into the wilderness. He went back to Egypt to gather up Israel and do what? Take them into the wilderness. When Jacob had to flee from his brother Esau, where did he go? into the wilderness. There he had this dream. It's called Jacob's Ladder where he saw these things. Where was it that he wrestled with an angel that may have been the Lord? It was in the wilderness. So it seems like this idea of the wilderness is tied towards meeting God. So I, I want to look at this Hebrew word a little bit deeper. Now in the Hebrew the term for wilderness is midbar. Mim, Dalit, Bet, Resh. And it technically means mouth. And so for me, it doesn't seem to be too far of a stretch to say that these two words are related, Mormon and Midbar. I think there seem to be a different type of wilderness because a wilderness for the term Mormon doesn't necessarily mean desert, but I do believe it's still tied to this idea of, of mouth or the organ of speech. So why is it that the Lord calls people into the wilderness? Because that's where the voice of God is. We are going into the mouth, the place of sp where, where God speaks to us. We go out into the wilderness, into the wild, because it's hard to find God in the everyday hustle and bustle of life. And so this, this actually makes quite a bit of sense. So I want to take a look at some other voices here, and I, I want to see, okay, so he tells Lehi to take his family into the wilderness, into Mormon, into the mouth of God, so that his family can hear the speech of God. And what happens? Laman and Lemuel, even though they're wicked, they see angels, right? They know. You can't tell me they didn't know that God was real. They obviously did because of the miraculous things that they saw. Nephi became this amazing prophet, and so did Jacob, leader of his people. Both of them leaders of their people, I should say. Because they went into the wilderness where they could hear the voice of God and they learned to hear God's speech. So then when you go back into the world, you know how to listen. So let's see, what's the next reference here? In the Universal Book of Mormon, 1 Nephi 162, 3, 4. Here we have the Lord commanding the sons of Lehi to go to the house of Laban and seek the records, the, what the scriptures, and bring them where? To the wilderness. Now obviously I'm not going to have time to hit all 250 plus times that the term wilderness is used in the Book of Mormon, but I want to hit some key ones. The first one is Lehi taking his family. The second one is taking the scriptures. To me these are two very, very key things. If we want to hear God, we don't do it alone. The Lord wants us to do it as a people. Remember, Moses was sent to take the Israelites, all of Israel, the entire family, into the wilderness. And here, Lehi is told to take his family. He, and I'm not going to read this, but he goes back. Here he sends his sons to go back, I should say, and get Ishmael and his family. So, so now you have multiple families. You have Zezrom. So you have all these people being taken into the wilderness with what? 
the scriptures. So if we're going to hear the voice of the Lord, this is very similar to what Jesus says in the New Testament. Where two or three gather, there am I. So what do we need? We need to be there with our families, with, with our the people we love, the people we care about. They're going to help us hear the voice of God in the wilderness. And we need the scriptures. In this case, it's the place of brass. For you, it's whatever scriptures the Lord places upon your heart. But he's not sending us there empty-handed, and he's not sending us there alone. And I think that's very important. So while we're still talking about Lehi and his family, well, let's take a look at 1 Nephi 1, 116, 4, 14. Now, when I, Nephi, had heard these words, I remember the words of the Lord, which he spake unto me in the wilderness, saying, Insomuch as thy seed shall keep my commandments, they shall prosper in the land of promise. So here's another key thing. When you're in the wilderness, what happens? Nephi heard the voice of the Lord. Now there's going to be other examples in here. Lehi has a dream, right? Nephi is taken up in vision. Both of them see the tree of life. Nephi gets, ex ex gets that, Lehi's dream expanded quite a bit. And when he comes back, he explains the dream based on his vision and using the scriptures. Where? In the wilderness. So right here, just in 1 Nephi, at the very beginning, it's still chapter 1, the original Book of Mormon, just the first couple of chapters in the Salt Lake City Church's version of the Book of Mormon, we have this key example of, this is the entire Book of Mormon. This is the entire book of the wilderness. Send out as a family, bring your scriptures, you're going to hear the voice of God. I think this is a key teaching of the Book of Mormon. Because remember, the Book of Mormon, according to Moroni, at the very end of the book, in chapter 10, it unlocks the spirit of prophecy and revelation. If we read it, and we study it, and we pray on it, the Holy Ghost will show us the truth of all things. And I'm guessing we're going to see that truth of all things where in the wilderness. Because that's where we hear the mouth of God. Let's we'll take a look at the next one. I want to wrap up Lehi and Nephi and their journey here in 1st Nephi with 1st Nephi 1, 137, 433 in the Universal Book of Mormon. And I spoke unto him, this is Nephi speaking to Zezrom, even with an oath that he need not fear that he should be a free man like unto us if he would go down in the wilderness with us. So the last thing I want to share with you about Nephi and Lehi's journey into the wilderness is the Lord gives us freedom. That's a, a very key thing in the Latter-day Saint movement. We're all about liberty and justice for all. We, we love the idea of freedom. We believe in free agency. True freedom comes to us when we follow the promptings of the Lord, follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit, and we meet the Lord where? In the wilderness. So when we don't just receive the voice of the Lord, there we also find liberty and freedom. So we're now in the promised land, and Jacob is speaking here. And he reminds us of what happens with Israel in Jacob 1717 in the Universal Book of Mormon. He says, We labored diligently among our people that we might pursue them to come unto Christ and partake of the goodness of God, that they might enter into his rest, lest by any means he should swear in his wrath that they should not enter in, as the provocation in the days of temptation while the children of Israel were in the wilderness. So I want to be very clear here. Those things I just mentioned, these are the things that we will find in the wilderness, but that's not to say that there won't be trials in the wilderness also. Look what happened when Jesus went to the wilderness. He was hungry. Satan came to him and tempted, it to turn ro and tempted him to turn rocks into bread. So we know that we go to the wilderness to hear the mouth of the Lord, but Satan's going to be there too. And I think the story of Moses in First Moses, chapter one in the 
plates of brass and uh, Moses chapter 1 and the Pearl of Great Price for the Salt Lake City Church, we have this record of Moses being in the presence of God. And what happens the moment God leaves? He's in the wilderness. God's there. He hears the voice of God. What happens? He's still in the wilderness. The moment God leaves him, Satan appears and tempts him and says, Come and follow and worship me instead. But because he's been the presence of the Lord, he knows better. And he says, Get thee behind me, Satan. So I don't want you to think that just because you're there to hear the voice of the Lord and you're there with the scriptures and your family and everything else, that there won't be trials. That everything will be perfect or hunky-dory. There's going to be trials. And we have to be aware of that and prepared for it. I want to sidetrack a little bit here. We're in still in the small plates of Nephi, but we're in the book of Omni, and this is a Malachi speaking. He says in the Universal Book of Mormon, 120b, 112d, and as many as would hearken unto the voice of the Lord should also depart of the land with him into the wilderness. So I want to be clear that even though we go out into the wilderness and we come back, this isn't going to be a one-time thing. We may be called into the wilderness multiple times. And so we need to be prepared to listen to the Lord so we can be in the right place in our spiritual journey at the right time. And I think that that really is key. And then skipping ahead a little bit, still in Omni, it says in 127 and 116, And they journeyed into the wilderness and were brought by the hand of the Lord across the great waters into the land where Mosiah discovered them. Now this is the Zoramites, but I want to bring it up because this is a second witness that the Lord is watching over us, that the Lord has a plan for us, and that in this journey, we're going to get where we need to be. And you know what? What's interesting about the Zoramites is they did not have the plates of brass. They did not have their scriptures. They lost their language. They lost their culture. And thankfully, the Nephites, they allowed the Nephites to share with them the scriptures. So we know what happens if we go in there unprepared. The Lord will still lead you to where you need to be, and he'll lead you to the people that you need to meet to give you the light and knowledge that you need to get back on track. So if the Lord sends you out and you're ill-prepared, if that's the way the Lord planned it, then that means he has a greater plan to make sure that you are prepared later. So don't fret if the Lord sends you out the wilderness and doesn't tell you to bring something, because that means he's got it waiting for you once you get where you're supposed to be. So moving right along, we're headed now to the book of Messiah. And here, Alma has taken the people that have been converted to Christ, and it says in the Universal Book of Mormon, Messiah, starting in 938, 18, 8a, and it came to pass that he, Alma, said unto them, Behold, here is the waters of Mormon, for thus were they called. And now, as ye are desirous to come into the fold of God, and to be called his people, and are willing to bear one of those burdens, that they may be light. Yea, and are willing to mourn with those that mourn. Yea, and comfort those that stand in need of comfort. And to stand as witnesses of God at all times, and in all things, and in all places that ye may be in, even until death. That ye may be redeemed of God, and be numbered with those of the first resurrection, that ye may have eternal life. And now I say unto you, if this be the desire of your hearts, what have you against being baptized in the name of the Lord? As a witness before him, that ye have entered into a covenant with him, that ye will serve him and keep his commandments, that ye may pour out his spirit more abundantly upon you. And now when the people had heard these words, they clapped their hands for joy and exclaimed, This is the desire of our hearts. So we're in the wilderness to hear the Lord. And yes, there will be temptations. We're also here to make covenants. The Lord calls us to hear his voice, and we are the covenant people. What is that covenant? According to the book of Exodus, and according to Third Moses and the plates of brass, all that the Lord has spoken we will do. How will we know what the Lord has spoken without personal revelation? How will we know what the Lord has to say if we do not go into the wilderness and hear the voice of the Lord? And brothers and sisters, I want to testify to you that to me, I've spoken before about what makes someone a Mormon. This to me is why 
I have no problem being called a Mormon because I am someone who has made the covenant as a part of the covenant to listen to the voice of the Lord. And in order to do that, we must go to Mormon, the mouth of the Lord, the wilderness, so that we can hear what the Lord has to say. So please don't ever let anyone try to shame you for being a Mormon. Being a Mormon just means you're a Christian that relies on God personally. Building a personal relationship with the Lord in the land of Mormon. And what is the land of Mormon? The wilderness. And what is the wilderness? The mouth of God. I think that these are key things that we need to understand about our religion. What is it Joseph Smith was trying to teach us? Not to follow a prophet. Yes, he was the one that was to lead the church, the organization, because you know you need to have one person establishing this new thing. But there was nothing established for after he died. Yes, he wrote a letter to James Strang stating, you're going to be my successor, but he didn't tell the people. And so the people didn't listen. And I think the Lord had a hand in that because the Lord wanted us to go our separate ways because he sent the Lord, sent the church into the wilderness. So we would all have an opportunity to hear his voice and grow in our own ways. I believe the Lord is now calling us back, not to be a part of some one church organization like people have been trying to build for the past, what, 200 years now? But rather, to be one in Christ, to be the covenant people that are willing to step into the wilderness, to hear the voice of the Lord, to be the prophetic people we've been called to be, and make these covenants, and then live them. And the only way we can live them is by having that personal relationship with God. And that is what is so important to me about Mormonism. Without that personal relationship, you might as well go to any church. It really doesn't matter. Just let whatever person tell you what they think you should do with your life. Mormonism is about going directly to God for yourself. We cut out the middleman. Yes, we have prophets, apostles, evangelists, etc., leading churches. But those are just organizations of men. They help us group together and get things done and lead people to Christ. But ultimately, we're not called to join a church, and no church has the power to save anyone. We're called into the wilderness. And I know I keep harping on this, but I'm not going to stop. We're called into the wilderness so that we personally can hear the voice of God. And brothers and sisters, I want to bear you my testimony of how real that is and that you are worthy and the Lord wants you to hear what he has to say to you. Now, I want to wrap this up towards the end of the Book of Mormon, the Book of Ether, which actually happens before Lehi, long before Lehi and Nephi leave Jerusalem because this happens after the Tower of Babel. But it's a very similar situation where the Lord is calling his people setting them apart and sending them into the wilderness. So this is Ether 129-7 in the Universal Book of Mormon. And the Lord would not suffer that they should stop beyond the seas in the wilderness, but he would that they should come forth even into the land of promise, which was choice above all of the lands which the Lord God had reserved for a righteous people. I want to close with this particular passage because... Getting to the wilderness is not where our journey ends. The Lord has a promised land for each of us. It may not be a literal property somewhere. And I don't think it was a literal property here either. I think that this was an allegory. I think the Lord did send some people somewhere. But as he was doing this, it wasn't merely to bless them with worldly goods or a place to stay. This was a spiritual journey for them where they had spiritual tools. Remember the brother of Jared, he worked on 16 stones, which he then took to the Lord. The Lord touched them with his finger and they, they glowed so they would have light. Miraculous things happened there. 
So miracles happen in the wilderness. But the reason why the Lord sends us out there to hear his voice is because there is a promised land. There is a destination that the Lord is sending us to. So brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that, I want to remind you that the Book of Mormon is not a story of people who got on boats and went somewhere and had a bunch of wars. The Book of Mormon is a message of hope. It's a message of our own struggles that we go through on our own journey into the wilderness because the Lord is calling each of us to the wilderness to be Mormons, to be his people, to hear his voice, to make covenants with him, to heed his call so that we can join with him in the promised land. If you have enjoyed this video and you'd like to hear other messages of hope, please like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Please share the video with others. We really want to get this message, message of hope out there to the world. I know there's a lot of people preaching gloom and doom, but God is hope. And so this is an invitation for you to join us in fellowship in the wilderness. If you'd like to know more about the Fellowship of Christ, our website is cjccf.org. Feel free to email us, info at cjccf.org. And until next time, shalom and God bless. <music>